YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. This space that I am filming in is my completed den. So this is now where I'll be filming majority of my Career Savage videos. I'll give you guys a tour of my office den space another time because the purpose of today's video is actually to talk about getting your bachelor's in public health. I did a video talking about things you could do after you receive your BPH and so many people have been asking me about what are the best bachelor's in public health programs? Where should I go? What school should I apply to? Of course, you guys already know what school I'm gonna say is the absolute best because that's where I got my MPH and they now have a BPH program focusing in urban health care disparities similar to my master's program. But I wanted to talk about three of my top bachelors of public health programs and the pros and cons of my number one school. So make sure you stick around and watch the entire video. Now I know some of you might think I'm biased because that's where I got my MPH, but I genuinely believe if you are passionate about urban healthcare disparities, that's the only place that you should be considering. If you're passionate about community organizing or educating people within your community, if you're passionate about advocating for marginalized communities in healthcare, clinical research, or just the medical setting in general, I do believe that the curriculum at Charles Audrey will equip you with the necessary tools to do just that in the professional workforce. I want to read to you guys one of the subsets on their website. They talk a lot about the different classes that people who pursue their bachelors of science in public health at Charles Audrey will achieve and accomplish. And I think it's really important that I read this one aspect. They say upon completion of your degree, BSPH graduates will be equipped to address health disparities, health equity, and social environmental justice issues prevalent in urban under-resourced communities. Now, just to unpack what that all means, means addressing health disparities. When we think about people who live in ghettos, so to speak, or low income communities, a lot of times those communities are near plants, they're near highways. And because they live in an area where there's a lot of pollution, there's a lot of noise, it decreases their quality of life. It increases their prevalence of COPD or other respiratory diseases. Addressing those type of health disparities, if that's something that you're interested in, going to Charles Drew is definitely a place for you. For me, I think a lot of the diseases that are among marginalized communities, for example, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, cholesterol problems, they stem from the fact that people of color of marginalized communities live in areas that are food deserts or where they can't get fresh vegetables or they can't walk outside to get exercise. And a lot of those things are the exact solution. So if it's something of interest to you to speak upon those issues and educate people, listen, Charles Drew is the place for you. The second thing I want to unpack, health equity. We talk so much about equity and equality in today's generation, and sometimes I think it's just buzzwords that people use with absolutely no action. But one thing about Charles Drew is they really teach you how to improve health equity. Now, I've talked about this before on my channel. I don't know if health equity will be achieved in my lifetime, but what I do like about Charles Drew is that, again, they're equipping you with the appropriate tools, the skill set, and the knowledge to at least start chipping away at at achieving that goal of health equity for everybody. Health equity is, how do I put this in layman terms? I, or there's a, there was this image that one of my professors showed me at Charles Drew where, and I'm gonna try and put it over here in the corner if I can find it, where it's two people and somebody, and there's a fence to watch like a baseball game or something. And there's one really tall person who only needs one box to see the game. He doesn't need three boxes. And then there's another really short person who has three boxes to stand on. That's equity. Being able to have equal opportunity to whatever the outcome is. So at Charles R. Drew, they'll really teach you on different ways you can achieve health equity within in different communities. Whatever the health issue that you're interested in, whether it's maternal health or it's, you know, rare diseases, those are the different things that they'll teach you to do. The third thing is socio-environmental justice issues. There was one time when I heard maybe like three years ago that residents in Compton and Watts actually, which is um, a part of Los Angeles, they still had brown water coming out of their faucets. And that was something that the city had not addressed. If you were to hear someone having brown water coming out of their faucets in Beverly Hills or Santa Monica or Palos Verdes, I almost guarantee you, you would never hear that happening. But also there would be a quickness to resolve the issue. Whereas people in lower income communities, they don't have that quickness. And also why 
why is that even a problem in the first place? So addressing those different types of socio-environmental justices on top of other justices, I think that injustices, I think that like mass incarceration among the African-American community is part of that socio-environmental injustice. And those are things that they do talk about within the curriculum at Charles Drew. Every social topic that you can think of that disproportionately affects people of color or people from marginalized communities is something that you will learn about in your curriculum at Charles Drew. The other part of the paragraph that they have on their website, it says BSPH graduates can pursue employment in local, state, and national public health agencies and organizations, social and health service sectors, non-for-profit community-based organizations, and be highly prepared to pursue further health-related graduate education, which would be, you know, your master's of science or your MPH, similar to what I did. Now, what I like about what they've put on their website here is they're actually telling you what you can do with your degree. A lot of schools fail to do that because I think so many people have an issue connecting career to curriculum, but I really do believe that Charles Drew is trying at the base level, which is with their undergrads, how to prepare you for the workforce. And the thing that I loved about my master's program was I connected it directly to my job. Like I was working and getting my master's at the same time. And I think Charles Drew really tries to equip you with tangible skills so that you can go in the workforce and get a job in whatever it is you're interested in. So the fact that they're telling you upon receiving your degree, these are the things that you will be able to do. And I guarantee you that if you went there, that they would sit with you and tell you, this is how you're going to get there. The professors are so approachable. And I think because it's such a small school, you get a lot more attention than you would at like a USC or any other larger organization where there are thousands of students and they can't keep track of your career ambitions as well as your curriculum. So next, I wanted to kind of go into the pros and cons of attending a school like Charles Drew to get your bachelor's of science in public health. Now, the first pro that I wanna talk about, which I just mentioned, was that smaller feel, that smaller setting. As you know, for my undergrad education, it was a smaller school. For my master's program, it was a smaller school. I do find that attending a smaller school and being in a smaller classroom setting with like 20 to 25 students, it really does enrich your education process. You're able to ask questions free there's so much more time for discussion because there's not a thousand people trying to contribute and sometimes even at larger organizations you don't really even larger schools you don't even really get to talk so that's one thing the second pro is obviously that it's an experimental education during my master's program at least we had to do like a capstone a thesis and all these different things to make sure that what we were doing we could actually apply and that is something similar that they do with their bachelor's of public health students they make sure that every step of the way that you're actually soaking in the knowledge that you're hearing and it's not just you take your test and you go about your day you you know turn in your homework assignments and that's it they want to make sure that what you're actually learning are things that you can actually apply so the experimental education piece is a unique key that will ensure your success upon graduation and not many universities do that the third uh, pro is that you do get the opportunity to have research experience and I think it's really important like I said I have my book coming out January of 2022 and one of the keys in my book that I talk about is putting your education into practice sooner than later and I do believe that at Charles R. Drew you get the opportunity to do that. The fourth pro is definitely the social justice focused education. I talk about this a lot on my my personal um, YouTube channel as well as my personal Instagram about how people always talk about how they're interested in social justice, about how they're interested in prison reform, about how they're interested in advocating for marginalized communities but what are you actually doing about it? And one thing that's great about Charles Drew is, as I said at the beginning of the video, is they teach you about what to actually do about solving those issues. So if you're someone who's extremely passionate about social justice reform, you're somebody that's extremely passionate about social justice in healthcare, Charles Drew is the only place for you, honestly. And that is exactly why I went there for my master's is because I was passionate about it and I had to think to myself, well, what are you going to do about it? And what I did was I went to Charles Drew. The fifth pro, of course, is that it is located in Los Angeles. So if you are someone who has more multiple interests and you're from out of state, you're not from California, you're not from Los Angeles, I think it's really nice to be in an area where you can experience different things. As you guys know, I'm a author, I'm a public health professional, I'm a advocate for my community, I'm a creative. And I think being in a community like Los Angeles has really fostered my creativity. I'm able to connect with other creatives, I'm able to connect with people in healthcare. And it's also a great place for opportunity in healthcare. You know, we have a bunch of hospitals in Los Angeles, there's a bunch of research opportunities, there's a bunch of community-based organizations. There's just, it's a great place to learn and grow. And I think it's different from going to school in like Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, where 
there's not a lot of exposure to the, the things that you are studying. So you don't really see it in real time, in real life. But I think the fact that Charles Drew is centered in Los Angeles and they try to expose you to the injustices and the inequalities within healthcare in Los Angeles is another thing that enhances your education. There's nothing better than, than seeing it. And I think it's kind of similar with like John Hopkins where the location of that school gives you exposure to some of the things you might be studying. Although I don't believe they have a social justice focus. So those are my five pros. Now, the only cons that I can really think of is that it's a small school. Now, some people don't wanna to go to small schools. You know, you wanna to go to a bigger school, you wanna vibe out, you wanna party, you wanna have a good time. So you don't wanna be at a school that doesn't have like crazy athletic team or doesn't have those crazy parties. But I, I think that, again, another thing about living in Los Angeles is you have the opportunity to network with other people. It's not like you're going to school in the middle of nowhere. Like there's USC, there's UCLA, there's LMU, there are so many SMU, there are a bunch of Cal States around here, Irvine's right there, Riverside's right there. There are enough schools in the area where you could still get that large school experience, like partying and hanging out with your friends at like big football games. Obviously USC and UCLA are like right here. So as long as you, you know, can Uber, or take a bus or ride with a friend, you'll still get that experience. And that's similar to what I did in my undergrad. I went to a really small school and yeah, we had a football team, but a lot of the times people would hang out at Yale or UConn or Quinnipiac or Southern Connecticut State or Bridgeport University. We went to so many other schools, even UMass, that it didn't really affect us or matter. So those are the pros and cons for Charles Jaw Drew. The other two universities that I would recommend um, is the University of San Diego, mainly because they have a capstone similar to what I mentioned about Drew, where you put your education into practice sooner. And then with Rutgers, before you graduate, I think they make you take like leadership seminars and all these other aspects to equip you for the career workforce. So that's why I said those are my other top two choices. Of course, there are a ton of universities out there and you can pick any school you want. What really matters is you focus on what you're interested in. And I think that if you're interested in, you know, social justice, Charles Drew should be your top choice. If you're interested in epidemiology, maybe you do go to San Diego or you do go to Rutgers or maybe you even go to Hopkins or Yale. It depends on what your in, your concentration interest is. So pick your bachelor's of science and public health program based on that. If you have any questions about pursuing your bachelor's in public health, you can always send me an email or book a consultation at careersavage.com. Don't forget guys that my book is coming out in January and I cannot wait for you guys to read it. All the links for the universities that I've mentioned are gonna be down below as well as additional information I think you might need in deciding what school to go to. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video and keep engaging in the comments guys. I love to make videos based on the things that you suggest. Until next time, bye!